Hey everyone, it's Jessie with Everyday Science. So I was back and forth about whether I would do a science and cinema video on the new Ant-Man movie, but spoiler alert, quantum entanglement was brought up almost right away and quantum entanglement is my jam. And by that I mean it is of great interest to me and I find it very fascinating. Quantum entanglement is not to be confused with quantum phasing done by this character, Ghost. Although if you are interested in that, I recommend doing some research starting with quantum tunneling. But for now, get ready to learn about some quantum mechanics and the quantum realm. What do you guys do? Just add the word quantum in front of everything? I'm glad you brought that up, fake Paul Rudd. Uh, the short answer is that if we're talking about the subatomic, then yes. Since the word quantum is just a way of qualifying that we're talking about really, really, really tiny things, subatomic things. And subatomic just means smaller than an atom and usually refers to particles within an atom. But it can also refer to anything that happens to be that tiny. So what is quantum entanglement? Well, speaking of ghosts, Einstein called quantum entanglement spooky action at a distance. Ooh, ooh. And it is spooky, if you think about it. If you saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, they actually personified this really well with Paul Rudd and Michelle Pfeiffer's characters. Quantum entanglement is when two subatomic particles become entangled with one another, and the action of the one determines the action of the other, no matter how far apart in this gigantic universe these two particles end up. Which, if you think about it, is a little spooky. Hence Einstein calling it spooky action at a distance. What the second Ant-Man movie suggests is that when in the first movie Ant-Man goes subatomic, he somehow becomes entangled with Janet Van Dyne, the original Wasp, who was lost in the quantum realm 30 years ago. So even though he's back to normal now and he's worlds away, atomically speaking, the two are still intrinsically connected somehow. And this leads to that amazing scene where Scott Lang talks to Hope Van Dyne and Hank Pym as Hope's mom, Janet, which the lovable and charismatic Paul Rudd pulled off in brilliant fashion. You got it, Jobin. It is an unspoken rule of the movie, however, and this is where it takes some liberties on the science, that although these two characters are entangled with one another, it's only when a portal to what the MCU is calling the quantum realm, named by experimental quantum physicist Dr. Spiros Mihalakis at Caltech, named after the microverse in the original comics, it's when that quantum realm is opened that the entanglement effect, so to speak, kicks in for these two characters. And this is probably for the best, narratively speaking, otherwise it would create all sorts of issues and questions and insanity for the entangled Scott Lang and writers and producers. But what about the practical applications of quantum entanglement outside of rescuing a loved one trapped for 30 years in the quantum realm? So I recently attended a really fun talk on black holes by Dr. Clifford Johnson, and he is another Los Angeles scientist, also at Caltech, who consults on an array of Marvel movies. And I wanted to mention this because black holes pose a really interesting problem regarding communication for which quantum entanglement might be a solution. Okay, so one of the most fascinating things about black holes to me is that they aren't actually black. What? They, they could actually, they could contain these magical worlds of color and light, and in fact they probably do, but we can't see inside of them to know. Black holes just appear black from the outside because once you're inside, nothing can travel fast enough to get out, including light, which is the fastest known entity in our universe. Sound is even slower than light, so once inside of a black hole, communication would be completely and utterly impossible. Can anyone hear me? Or maybe not. <laughs> if two particles can communicate with one another across the universe instantaneously through quantum entanglement, then this could make it possible to communicate from inside of a black hole. Think it'll work? It'll work. It'll work. We don't really know yet. Science is still exploring the abilities and implications of quantum entanglement, and I personally am on the edge of my seat waiting to see what happens. Much like we all are regarding the post-credit scene disappearance of Ant-Man's squad, leaving him trapped inside the quantum realm with no idea about Thanos and the events of Infinity War. I'm excited though to see how Marvel continues to explore some of my favorite themes from quantum mechanics. Hey, thank you so much for watching everyone. Please share, like, subscribe, comment, however, whichever this might be. And don't forget to be kind to each other and don't be afraid to ask questions about math and science and the world around us that keeps curiosity alive. And what do you think? 
How is he going to get out of the quantum realm? 